Hey everyone, this is Gamma, and welcome back to Let's Play Perfect Dark. Uh, we're going to reattempt Data Dine investigation because I died because I was talking way too much. Uh, and because I was explaining why exactly I was even doing this. Uh, so let's actually get back to this. We've already seen this cutscene, so we're going to skip the cutscene so that we can come back here. Actually, just for the sake of variety, I'm actually going to go the proper way this time. So, take that, you. Intruder alert! Watch them all fall like dominoes. Oh, except for you, you're still alive. Yeah, the animations for these guys were super novel back in the day. What are you doing? Uh... Like, again, because this is the... This was originally made for the Nintendo 64, Nothing was seen like this before, well, uh, like, outside of maybe a cutscene, but, like, this was super, super impressive, especially for the Nintendo 64. The, the body animations, the excessive use of voiceovers, nothing was, like, nothing was done to that effect. Even games on the PlayStation didn't necessarily have the same kind of, uh dynamic NPC dialogue that this game has. See, this is how you're supposed to come. This is how the designers assumed that you would come into the level from. They're all hiding behind cover, but even then, that's still not stopping me from picking these bastards off one by one, because... Because you decided to work for the wrong side. You should have joined the Carrington Institute. You had to just be an evil guard. So, yeah. Now we're going down here, because this is where we're supposed to go. Bum, bum, bum. DIE! You don't belong in this world. You will end now. Enemy detected. Weapon cache locked. That's okay. We don't want to have dual wielded submachine guns, which is what's down here. So we're gonna reprogram the cleaning robot, and then we're going to start his cleaning cycle, and everything is going to be cleanly and clean. And then I'm going to completely not know where I'm going for a second, and then we're going to get back into... Fuck you, you CMPs. I hate you. Okay, so... Now we gotta go back up there and do the actual isotope objective. The only way that you can get to that secret weapon is if you are somehow actually able to stealth your way through here and, uh, not have anyone actually notice that you're here. You still have to kill everyone, but you can do it in a very specific way that makes it so that nobody gets triggered, essentially. So, into the radioactive room, into the caution room. We're throwing caution to the wind because we're gonna go walk in there because there are proximity mines that we absolutely positively want Understood. Ugh. and of course we're gonna not be able to see one thing that's really nice about this xbox live version is uh in addition to the graphics they also seriously cleaned the the audio up there is a little bit of an issue with the, the MIDI compositions, the strings in particular have a little bit of a issue where they don't go above a certain octave for some reason, but aside from that, this is an absolutely wonderful port, and if this is your first time playing it, I would suggest grabbing this version either through Xbox Live Arcade or through Rare Replay, because, ah, oh, this game is still fun as all living fuck. Where are you, you science bastard? Shut down the experiments. Don't shoot your own guy. What's wrong with you? Yes, your experiments. My time that you wasted. What kind of a... You're worse than the stormtroopers, man. Don't shoot. All right, I'll just whack you. Even though you totally would have shot me anyway, because you're mean. You are not a good person. Good people don't get up here. Oh, hello. All right, I'm out of bullets, so that means I gotta shoot you with my wonderful 
CMP-150 automatic machine gun with lock-on technology, brought to you by the Datadyne Corporation. Oh, we don't want to go there just yet, but we will because these guys are going to try to follow us now. Fucking die. Thank you. No, you have no choice. So comical. Alright, so let's just quickly go back over here because more experimentals need to be deactivated. As well as items that need to be collected. I, I haven't seen you before. That's because I'm not from here. Now, please, just don't hurt me. Why are all the consoles facing outwards like this? Why aren't they, like, over here where he can get access to all of them in addition to these two rather big-looking monitors? I'm pretty sure these are monitors. Oh, yeah, they're monitors. Anywho, you're a bad man. Go to bed. I do want to backtrack because I do want to get the K7 Avenger because that weapon is absolutely lovely. And having it is fun, especially this early in the game. Uh, basically, the context of this thing's existence here is that in the perfect agent mode objective, uh, you have to retrieve three pieces of experimental technology. There is that, the, the gun, the K7 Avenger, but there's also the prototype shield, which you can't use, as well as night vision goggles, which you do eventually use. But first, we're gonna see what these guys are up to. And again? Interesting. I want that gun. She's got a gun! I've actually got a couple of guns, but thank you for being so observant, Mr. Doctor. Go to bed. So yeah, like I was saying before I was rudely killed in the last video, this is the K7 Avenger. It is a Datadyne-produced weapon, it is a very powerful assault rifle, and its alternative mode actually highlights, uh, like, immediate threats, uh, such as auto cannons and mines. It's actually super useful. It's also really powerful. It fires incredibly fast, uh, but the caveat to that is that the clip size of it is actually pretty small. Uh, it only has 25 rounds per magazine, which is a little abysmal for a weapon of its caliber, but I guess that's just what happens when you balance the game out, I guess. Unfortunately, when the enemies actually have them, they have a stupidly unfair advantage because... Uh, they don't have to deal with any of the problems that's provided by the K7 Avenger. So we're gonna go in here and find the last experiment. You? Switch this thing off. You're fucking rude, man. I need to assist you. Accident. Fuck you. Yeah, if you uh, if you if you let the third guy uh, use one of the computers, he will actually sound the alarm. So you basically gotta guesstimate which one it is, which should just happen to be this one. Which is ironically the, uh, same one that it was when I was playing with Hoax. So now we've gotten that objective completed, which means that we only have one thing to do. Photograph the isotope because I completely forgot to photograph the isotope. Holy crap! I am not making a good first impression. Whatever, that thing is not too far away, so... We can salvage this! We can totally fix this. Alright, cam spy! Click! I can't believe I friggin' did that. I am gonna show off one silly little thing, though, since we're here. I'm gonna break out my cam spy. Check it out! I'm blurry, so my head is bobbing back and forth. Whoop. 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 It looks fun. Now let's go finish the level. So yeah, Datadyne is basically this super high-tech corporation, but they're also apparently involved with some rather evil corporation-type activity. 
uh, it's not exactly completely clear just what exactly they do. Like, I'm going to imagine that they're... Cyber... That they have a lot of... Ah, oh, frig! Like, they have, like, a lot of cybersecurity stuff, and are obviously a huge weapons manufacturer, and probably even help with private military contractors, but, uh... What's even more confusing is what the hell the Carrington Institute is actually supposed to be. It, that thing could be a whole bunch of different things. And we'll find out a little bit more about them as we progress through the game. Unfortunately, we kind of can't progress any further because uh, this robot's got to actually come through here and turn off the lasers. This is what the second objective wanted us to do. Uh, basically make this robot have a cleaning route through here so we can actually get through these lasers. Even though if we were in any other modern video game, we would probably be able to possibly squeeze through here through some sort of contextual button breast or something like that. Unless we're talking about Call of Duty in which we would just be able to jump maybe an inch into the air and not be able to do anything either way because that's not supposed to be what goes on in the linear pathway. So, yeah, okay, here he comes. Ah, uh, this game's got such a, such a boss soundtrack. Grant Kirkhope is a very wonderful man. He produced many great video game soundtracks in his day and is still around today. Oh, hello! You are a man. You are now a dead. Yes! I am here. And I'm here to fuck your shit up. So please. They really like saying that a lot. So we're gonna grab the shield. We're going to marvel at the reflective water there. You can definitely tell that they uh, specially textured that thing just for that. I love it when things are reflective. All right, so now we're gonna go in through this door. That's the highest security sector. Dr. Carl has got to be nearby. No, you don't say. Well, now we are going to put to use. Oh! Never mind. Never mind. There are still dudes here. I can. I, I can. I fucking saw you guys. You guys just kind of showed up through right in the corner to fuck my shit up. Fortunately, we still have a nice, healthy shield. Either way, that proximity mine that we grabbed is going to be super useful right now because of a dick move the game likes to pull on this difficulty. So we're going to place the mine right about here. And then we're going to go over to this computer, get our data uplink, so that we can unlock it. See, it's locked, but we're going to unlock it. Connection established. Aha. Yep, dudes spawned here. And as a result, they exploded because I put a mine there. Because otherwise they would literally come over there and backshoot you. It's a beginner's trap. But that's okay, because we're almost done this level. We're gonna come in here. We're gonna weave our way through this corridor. We're going to shoot these people with our magnificent K7 Avenger. And then... Uh, we're going to admire how these people have the accuracy of a... Uh, the stormtroopers and the Autobots combined, and now we are going to go to the last part. This is what I mean here by the threat detector, if you can kind of tell there. Uh, it says auto gun on those things. So that's especially useful in multiplayer when uh, people decide to lay proximity mines all over the place, because that's just what you do in the multiplayer. So I'm going to see if I can break that one. Oh yeah, I fucking broke that one. And we're reloading. Can't really do anything about that. Come over here. Shoot me. Shoot me. Shoot me. You're not gonna shoot me? Fine, I'll shoot you. Boom. And now we enter the restricted door. And we complete our fourth objective. And here, we are hopefully gonna find him. Where is he? Come on, where are you? Dr. Carroll? Dr. Carroll, are you here? Well? Is it safe to come out? Yes, all clear. Oh! oh. What? what? Yeah, what? What's with all those lights? Very professional. Also, he's a laptop. But there's no time to waste. You must leave immediately. Those eyes, man. Come on. I have vital information. You must protect me. Really? 
can you at least tell us what's going on? Mr. Dr. Carol guy, Christmas Carol, Dr. Who's it? So, yeah, that's the second level of Perfect Dark. Uh, so we're about to get into some seriously heavy shit because now we have to escape from Data Dine Central. So, we're gonna do that in the next video. Until then, I'm Gamma, and this has been Perfect Dark.